I am a gamer. All the oppressed groups shall prosper, especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. But I'm also broke. So I like to rummage through secondhand stores to find good deals on games, but also find little oddities. Whether it's a hidden gem or some trash game that just catches my eye. Usually when I go out, I have a chaperone with me. Mostly because I get lost easily, but also to tell me no. You don't need to buy a Ride to Hell Retribution, you just got Duke Nukem Forever last week. Damn, those alien bastards lowered my sperm count. But on rare occasions, I get let loose on my own and find my way to the store. And I get to buy whatever trash I feel like. <laughs> and the last time I snuck out without my chaperone, I grabbed this little oddity. Past Cure. Something about its box art just called to me. The game describes itself as a psychological thriller. And while the voices have yet to cease, did this game leave me feeling thrilled? Past Cure was released in the Year of Our Lord 2018 on the PC, PlayStation 4, and the X-Boner. The game was developed and self-published by the studio Phantom 8, a game studio based in Berlin, Germany. Oops! Wrong footage from Berlin. Now that's better. The studio is composed of a rather small team of about 8 people. Oh, I see where they get the name. And Past Cure was the studio's debut release. Them dropping their second title the same year, Marble Combat. Which seems to be a racing, fighting game centered around marbles? Marble Combat is free and available on Steam. Which I sadly didn't play because I have a Mac. Sorry. Yet another blow to the journalistic integrity of this channel. Information on this studio is fairly sparse. The studio has been closed for a hot minute now, likely closing in 2019, since that's when their Twitter went silent. The studio's old website is now gone. I have tried to take a look at it via the Wayback Machine, but the whole operation stalls at the age verification. The co-founder, Simon Gernsman, hopefully I'm saying that right, no longer works in the game industry. He's currently working for Anheuser-Busch, the Bud Light Company. But what about Past Cure? Well, let's just jump into it and see if it's a hidden gem lost to time or if it's what helped close the studio down. Past Cure is a weird hodgepodge of game genres. It's a third person shooter and a stealth game and a survival horror with an emphasis on puzzles. Why don't they just throw in a battle royale mode and you'll never have to play anything else ever again, right? While the game hops from genres every half an hour or so, there is still a heavy focus on the narrative, and that narrative is something the devs are really proud of. And right as you're getting in the groove of the gameplay, there's always a cutscene that just takes you right out of it. And a lot of times these cutscenes don't really even show you anything. Why do I need to see random shots of the arena? Just to show me that there's guards there, I guess? I don't know if this is the devs attempt at a cinematic feel, or if it's their way to tell me to wake up and actually engage with the gameplay. And while you're exploring these levels, you'll find files dotted throughout, which I'll dig into later when we really start covering the plot. In my videos, I try to be fair and balanced when talking about media, trying to take the good with the bad. But goddamn, was this game bad. I had to fight my inner irate gamer every time I booted up this game. What a piece of diarrhea dick waffles! I don't even know how this game made it to store shelves. Everything about this game is not good. Maybe, just maybe I can really dig into this game and find some redeemable qualities. But man, is that going to be difficult. The gameplay is dodgy at best. The guns feel floaty and weak, almost like firing a nerf gun at a brick wall. The guns don't necessarily sound great, not giving them enough oomph. And the bullets honestly have the impact of a Puck to it. But the supernatural powers is where this game almost gets interesting. You get two different powers, one to slow down time, which almost feels necessary to get through some of these combat sections, and the other power astral projection. This almost made me think this game is actually cooking. With this astral projection ability, you dissociate and move your consciousness around a small area around your body. While using astral projection, you can also use telekinesis. Which really just comes down to headbutting things with your disembodied consciousness. And this is used for most of the puzzles throughout the game. But can also be used to deactivate cameras in your environment or stun enemies. Honestly, I think this is the nucleus of a really good idea. During these puzzle segments, I almost started enjoying this game. It only became a problem later in the game when for certain puzzles you had to use it with enemies in the room. I don't know, something about the design of some of these puzzles just feels a bit off. 
like leaving your body behind with a bunch of one hit kill enemies in the room while you're dissociating doesn't seem like it's great design. But for the most part, the puzzles are nice and straightforward and were honestly my favorite parts of this game. There are times where the puzzles feel either a bit obtuse or just straight up annoying due to either the game engine or the physics linked with it. Like this puzzle, where you have to push this box into electrical current to raise these elevators. Then use your astral projection to knock that box away to stop the current from killing you further up. I tried to knock the box away when I first got up there, with no luck. Then I spent another 20 minutes in this room looking for the answer to this puzzle. Until just deciding to use astral projection again and smacking my consciousness against this box about a dozen times, until it finally dislodged. It's just all around janky. The game's stealth is also basic and... Is not good. It runs a simple line of sight detection system. Sound and light don't really make much of a difference. Minus shooting a gun in the arena, I guess. You do get a stealth takedown and aforementioned security cameras that will set off an alarm if you run into its line of sight. If or when you get detected, a timer will start for you to kill all the enemies in the room before you just fail the mission and get sent back to the last checkpoint. Enemies will notice dead bodies in the arena, but you can't move the corpses like a conventional stealth game, so it can throw a wrench into your plans. These stealth sections are definitely not fun to play. The detection feels a little inconsistent at times, and the prompt for the takedown can just break, leaving your character standing behind an enemy, huffing their farts. You can use your astral projection to show you enemies on the map, as well as their vision cones, giving you a bird's eye view of the arena. Once again, astral projection being the best part of this game so far. Thank you, dissociation. And last but certainly not least are the horror sections of this game. To be honest, I didn't hate these horror sections, but I didn't particularly like them either. They were just kind of meh. I don't dislike the look. These dilapidated rusty buildings kind of give a we have Silent Hill at home, but with only one spooky enemy type. Come on, even the lackluster Silent Hill Homecoming had more enemies and more style than this. In these spooky sections, you can either shoot Mr. Clean and solve subpar puzzles, or sneak past Johnny Sins and solve more subpar puzzles. The biggest flaw of these sections are they just aren't scary. While they have a vaguely spooky aesthetic, it's all stuff that I've seen and done before. The environments are what I just feel like are spooky vanilla, and the enemies are even worse than that. I didn't find these mannequin men very threatening or scary, and the one-hit kill they dish out didn't make me scared or uncomfortable in any way. It honestly made me laugh more than anything. Like, it's actually kind of funny to watch them lightly step on the protagonist's face and the screen fade to black. You can say this game is trying, but nothing about it really sits right. It's like the most bland version of horror you can find. Nothing about it stands out as unique or interesting in my opinion. Oh, I almost forgot. There is one mechanic that I found a little interesting, but like the rest of the game, it never reached its full potential. And that is the game's insanity mechanic. If you use your powers too much and don't take your pills, you start hallucinating. The screen shakes and a horde of Mr. Cleans will come out of the ground to kill you. But if you just take your pills, poof, it all goes back to normal. I like the concept of if you overuse your powers, you receive a penalty, but it doesn't amount to much. Once you take your pills, the voices just stop, almost like in real life. I don't know, it just seems like every interesting feature just lands flat when everything else is bad to mediocre at best. While the gameplay leaves a lot to be desired, the story, ooh, the story, doesn't actually fare much better. The plot of past cure is not good. You follow Ian, this generic white guy, Model 48. Ian is in the middle of a psychotic break, having nightmares every night and having wild, spooky hallucinations. Ian has amnesia, the most original hero origin story ever put to paper. He woke up in the middle of jolly old England with about three years gone from his memory, as well as waking up with a case of superpowers that came with the terrible hallucinations. The hallucinations are violent and spooky, but this <coughs> pretty lady that is a savior a image of sorts. But was she a former lover, a waifu, who knows, but she seems pretty important. And while Ian's trying to figure all this out, he's staying in his brother's snazzy beach house. His brother Marcus is totally not a Bond villain by the look of his house. And the reason there's a full shooting range in the basement is because it seemed cool. 
And the reason Marcus isn't around, it's because he's too busy being a successful doctor, of course. And the reason he keeps supplying you with the mystery drugs that give you your powers and probably the hallucinations, as well as handing you orders like some sort of CIA handler is because, um, Ian is just too stupid to read the writing on the wall, literally at some points. Or all the notes you find laying around the levels, spelling out all the intrigue. Like saying everything about Ian's setup is part of a secret program to create super-powered assassins for the CIA or other shadowy government organizations. But Ian never gives it a second thought, and just follows orders to infiltrate and steal the Nexus drugs, the same line of drugs that give him his powers, from this hotel that the drug company bought out just to keep their top scientists hidden away in. And after shooting up the entire hotel to make it to his room, you find him with his eyes gouged out and, um, kitty pictures near the body? Odd choice creatively, I think. I just kind of feel like the writers wanted to be edgy in some way with the revelation that the doc is a certified pedophile and it doesn't really lead to much either. You find out that there's a secret government initiative to take kids and pump them full of these drugs turning them into the aforementioned drug field assassins and that Ian's dad, whom he keeps yapping about through the game, is likely just the head of this program. You even find a marbled statue on his desk that look like the enemies you fight in the horror segments. Ah, you see all these threads tying together with the grace and subtlety of a blowhorn. After you try to flee the hotel, you end up getting knocked out and saved by the mystery woman from Ian's dreams. Finally, maybe we can get some real answers. Her name is Sophia and she seems to be a rival spy, trying to take out Nexus for other reasons that never really get explained. You might have assumed that her and Ian might have had some sort of past, but nope, this is the first time they're meeting. And Ian and Sophia's meeting is something that really throws a wrench into Marcus's plans, whatever they really were. So Marcus sends an army after both Ian and Sophia. Now you have to fight your way out of the hotel. The dude won't even acknowledge it when he hears Marcus over the radio telling the men to kill both him and Sophia. Like, how can this man be this dumb? You slog your way through this hotel with waves of agents trying to kill you until you finally meet the game's first and penultimate boss, the Glitch Agent. And God is this bad. You just plink away at him from a distance until he runs away and another wave of goons show up. But once you finally take care of Discount Neo, you get spirited away back to the horror dimension to fight Amos. Amos, this bald guy, kept appearing in Ian's hallucinations, but didn't even get a mention in any notes, or even talk until the very end of the game. To be honest, I wouldn't have even known his name until it popped up with a health bar. The boss fight itself also kinda sucks. You shoot at the marble men, trying to protect Sophia. You dodge Amos' attacks, waiting for him to finally grace the arena with his presence. The dude essentially has Jesse Faden's powers from Control. Amos has a lot of one-hit kill attacks like the concrete he eats at you or his anime. Nothing personal, kid. And once you finally beat this painfully unfun boss, you get a cutscene where Ian takes this black pill, essentially becoming a Super Saiyan, and takes control over the horror realm. Him and his Johnny Sins army now beat the shit out of Amos and give you the craziest twist of all that it was all a dream that you're still a government test subject, being pumped full of drugs, and you get put back into cryosleep. I don't know, man. This game is simultaneously overwrought and boring. None of the characters are compelling. The drama just wasn't there. And the twists weren't even twists when half of them were literally written on the walls. I can appreciate ambitious games, even when they don't necessarily hit the mark. And I will say, Past Cure does have ambition, but I feel like it's in all the wrong places. Like, why do you need to shift genres every 20 minutes or so? Why couldn't you just focus on a couple areas and make a more compelling game? Like, make a spy thriller that has third-person shooting and stealth. Or make a horror game dealing with trauma and working with puzzles. You really didn't need to combine them all into one game. It just doesn't work. It feels unfocused, the game feels like it's full of filler even though it's only 4 hours long, and feels like it really could have been edited down in the planning stage, and have made into a more compelling game. The story was like film students first draft at a feature film. It had big ambitious ideas, but a lack of foresight and planning to execute properly, relying on terrible cliches. There were a few interesting mechanics slapped into a pretty bad game overall. I wish I could say that it's sad this studio didn't really go on to make anything else. 
but I think the studio's closure really just saved us from another terrible game. Looking back, there really isn't anything redeemable about this title, unless you appreciate the hubris of blind ambition with a lack of talent. Okay, a lack of talent might be a bit harsh, because the game's environments and models do look nice, definitely low budget, but there are moments when the game looks kinda good, and even making a subpar game like this does take a lot of time and dedication. But god, you could have scrapped half the ideas and put them into another project to really flesh them out fully, instead of making one project with a half dozen half-baked ideas. I would definitely not recommend this game to anyone, unless you really hate yourself and just want to experience a game so bad it's even hard to laugh at. Thank you for watching. I know this video took a different direction than usual, but I still hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not hit like, subscribe, maybe hit that little bell icon so you'll get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you again for watching this, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.